are pretty on Ulysses. There it is. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Do you ever have those times when you're just kind of not sure what you want to make a video about? You peruse the tags that are going around and nothing is quite gelling with you. And then you have two glasses of wine and you decide in 12 minutes or less to make your own tag. Well, that's the kind of evening it's been over here at Sean the Book Maniac. So hello, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. This is the... I just chose the name uh, 10 seconds ago and I lost it so I'm gonna give it a new name this is the two books with one stone tag I had another one but I, I can't remember it okay so uh, yeah it's just a, a slapdash tag and I expect it's gonna spread like wildfire number one the second last book you read that was the short story collection, The Interpreter of Maladies by Jhumpa Lahiri. I read it last week and I absolutely loved it. It was just fantastic. Published uh, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, I'm not sure. Jhumpa Lahiri is an Indo-American writer and her family came from the Bengal region of India and that debut collection of short stories just wowed me with the way that she explored cultural difference and <laughs> immigration and intergenerational misunderstandings with so much humor and insight and shaped that's the key word shaped really pleasing stories that were just a joy to read it was a five-star read for me number two the book that is second from the top of your TBR so you can go to your Goodreads TBR or you can think of what you've got planned for the next few weeks or the next month and I chose the latter. So the second from the top of my May TBR is another work of Indian fiction, and that is That Long Silence by Shashi Deshpande. I'm reading it for the Asian Readathon, and I've never read anything by her. I'd never heard of her until I accidentally bought this book I, by chance at a used bookstore here in Tokyo. And it is about a husband and wife who abandon their two teenage children in Bombay because the husband is has been accused of business malpractice. So that sounds like a rather dramatic story. I absolutely love Indian literature and I'm always eager to try new writers. I have another book by her that I bought more recently from the same used bookstore, so if this one's good, I'll give the other one a go. Number three, two two-star reads. So if you use Goodreads, there's a five-star rating system. Some people love it, many people use it, some people poo-poo it. That's fine. You can translate this into any criteria you want. For example, two very mediocre reads if you don't use the five-star rating system. I chose two f somewhat at random that I've read. I think I read one late last year and one this year, but I didn't choose the most recent ones because, you know, regular subscribers to my channel, <laughs> they've seen me blather on about it quite recently. So one of them was Slave Old Man by... Patrick Charmozeau. This was a book I was really looking forward to trying and I was quite disappointed by it. It started out brilliantly. Translated from French by Linda Coverdale. So he's a French language writer from Martinique and a pioneer of the Creo, Creolite movement. And the first half was brilliant. It's about a very old slave on the island of Martinique who, after serving his master for decade upon decade upon de decade, decides to run away when he's, you know, a very old man. Unfortunately, the second half devolved into a whole bunch of literary theory and philosophy, and there was no story in the second half, so many people love it. I was quite disappointed because of that. Another two-star read, and this is rather controversial, and you know how much I love being controversial, was Lissa Evans' novel, Old Baggage. Again, it started out really good, and then it devolved into a Disney movie. Just no. It just became trite. I mean, it was about an aging suffragette who didn't know what to do with herself after universal suffrage had been achieved in the, in the late 1920s in the UK. And there was humor but then the characters got to be really flat. There was a lesbian relationship, which I thought was 
underexplored and how the story resolved itself just turned into a Disney movie and I thought it sucked. But many people loved it. Number four, two great books by the same author. My top read of 2018 was Women Talking by Miriam Taves. I absolutely loved it. I have a full review, which I will link in the show notes. It's much more recently been published in America, and so lots of other people are agreeing with me, and I'm delighted by that. And her last novel before that, All My Puny Sorrows, is also one of the best novels I've ever read, certainly by a Canadian writer. She is my favorite living Canadian writer, definitely. <laughs> both of those. Miriam Taves. Note the pronunciation, people. Miriam Taves. Rhymes with saves. Raves. Caves. She is one of the few writers from Canada that I would uh, passionately recommend to the whole world. Now, number five, I'm the Empress of Bailing, so I bail regularly, weekly, sometimes daily. So this is two bails. Two recent bails or two books you have DNF. But if you're not a bailer, then I'm in also including two books you wish you had bailed on, and if you are m morally opposed to bailing, then two books that you hated. So take your pick. More or less at random. I didn't again. I didn't want to choose recent books because you know my regular subscribers are up to date with that. But notable bails of the last few months have been *The Court Dancer* by Kyung Suk Shin, which. Too bad about all the hype, because it was just so subpar. I couldn't get past the bad sex rating and the love story. Oh, my God. And perhaps even more controversially for all you literary types, Iris Murdoch's The Sea, The Sea. I hated this book with all my heart. I read as a buddy read with Wilson Shugart and Chris of Chris Booker's Cauldron up to at least around page 200. And I just... It was one of those cases where, yes, I know that you're not a grown-up reader if you can't enjoy a novel with a despicable protagonist, but I hated the protagonist so much. I hated everything about the book. Of course, it was gorgeously written. This is the only thing I've read by her, and it'll be decades, and I don't know that I have decades left, people. Look at this face. Before I will ever try another Iris Murdoch. Just, I don't want to live in that kind of a world that she creates. She creates it beautifully, but I hate everything about it, so... Yeah. Number six. Two favorite reads so far this year. I read this earlier this year, The Known World by Edward P. Jones, about an, a freed slave who became a slave-owning plantation owner. This is my third favorite book of all time. I'll link my review. Enough said. For the second favorite read, I'm reading one right now that may end up on this list, but for now, I am quite comfortable to say that Mary McCarthy's novel from the 1960s, The Group, would also be a favorite read if I had to pick only two of, of the year so far. And this was published, I believe, in the 1960s. The first copyright is 1954, but I'm pretty sure it was published in the 60s. Anyway, the mid-50s or 60s. And it's about a group of women that graduate from Vassar College in 1931, and it's about the next decade of their lives. And it's just wonderful, powerful. I absolutely loved it. I can't wait to read more by Mary McCarthy. Number seven, two new booktubers you would like to shout out. Well, I had trouble narrowing it down to two, but I have chosen two guys. One... And I don't know his name, but maybe he's used it on his channel. But I just w was besotted by the first couple of videos I watched, and then I have been busy. I haven't had a chance to go back. But on the basis of that, I am dying to shout out the young man who's responsible for the new BookTube channel, The Weird Book Book Club. <laughs> just go watch his videos. They're amazing. And similarly, all of, of A Book All Of has already shouted this guy out, but I'm going to add to the fanfare. And again, I haven't picked up on his name. I'm not good with that unless it's put in the show notes or I've, you know, have to watch a whole bunch of videos before I get the, the person's name. But his channel name is supposedly fun. And he is one of the most articulate. Like, I wish I could speak about books as articulately as he does. He's just amazing. So those are the two that I would shout out as, you know, very new booktubers worth your time. Please check them out. Number eight, a book you have read twice. There's been quite a few, but the one that I will choose is J.L. Carr's A Month in the Country. I believe it won the Booker in about 1981, am I right? 
It was published in 1980, and it was nominated for the Booker Prize. I don't think it won. It won the Guardian Fiction Prize. It's a novella. It's about 120 pages or something, and it's a perfect novel. It's one of my favorite novels of all time, and it was a five-star read when I read it four years ago, and I reread it as a group book to buddy read earlier this year or late last year and it was a, and it was a seven star read the second time around just wonderful it's about a a man who had fought in world war Two, and a few years later he's he's traumatized he has ptsd and some physical injuries and he is a restorer of artwork and murals and he goes out into the boonies of the of england to uncover a mural from like the 14th century that was had been painted on the wall of the church but then some more traditional conservative priest had ordered it to be covered up several hundred years later and now it was to be uncovered and it's he spent a month in the country and it's just it's about everything and it's hard to know what to say about anything as a writer of fiction after he said what he said just absolutely incredible number nine two fabulous quotes short quotes but two fabulous quotes from recent reading so uh, the first one comes from the tale of genji which i am in the middle of i'm actually about three quarters of the way through uh, as a buddy read with Britta bowler and the writing or the translation which is by royale tyler is excellent but there aren't sentence by sentences quotes that jump out at me and this one really did from in a chapter that I read last week with Britta. I don't remember who the character is, but whoever he is, here it is. He died as foam melts from the water without ever managing to see the princess again. So it's that first half. He died as foam melts from the water. That just that image just struck me. And a little bit of a longer one from one of the stories from the Jhumpa Lahiri collection called The Interpreter of Maladies. And the title of this story is When Mr. Perzada Came to Dine. And this is about a young girl who is slowly getting to know her father's new friend whose family back in the Bengal region of India are, he doesn't know where they are or if they're safe during some civil unrest. Eventually, I took a square of white chocolate out of the box and unwrapped it. And then I did something I had never done before. I put the chocolate in my mouth, letting it soften until the last possible moment. And then, as I chewed it slowly, I prayed that Mr. Perzada's family was safe and sound. I had never prayed for anything before, had never been taught or told to. But I decided, given the circumstances, that it was something I should do. That night, when I went to the bathroom, I only pretended to brush my teeth, for I feared that I would somehow rinse the prayer out as well. Well, as any of you know, I am not a religious person, but I thought that was just sublimely beautiful and very moving, so I love that. So those are two. Number 10, tag a bunch of booktubers, but it must be in a multiple of two. Have I got that right? A multiple of two? It must be divisible by two, so you can do four or two or six, but you can't do three or five. Is that multiple? I don't know. Math, math, people. Okay, so I'm going to tag the two book, new booktubers that I shouted out, Weird Book Book Club and Supposedly Fun. And then I'm going to go to my comment section and tag four more six tags so four more literary labors mark nash tired mama tries to read and doris of all the books but i'm also throwing this open to any of you that are just in the mood to do a quick tag thanks for watching oh.